In the previous video, we talked about how we can configure our application properties to make sure that all of our uh, settings are ready when we start building an application. We talked about the Spring Data Source and we'll be talking more about this and also setting up our database. Next is the Quartz properties where we talked about our persistent jobs where we store the jobs inside the database and also the thread count which is basically uh, how many threads would you want in your application to run your Quartz jobs. Next was the mail properties. We talked about using the SMTP gmail.com uh, host and having a username passwords ready and also making sure that you have turned on uh, allow less secure apps to use Gmail uh, so that you can actually send emails from your Spring Boot application to uh, the recipient. Now, in this video, we'll talk about how we can configure our MySQL server and connect it to our Spring Boot application. So, First, uh, you need to have MySQL on your um, local computer. So I'm currently using a Mac. So for a Mac, I would suggest having installing MySQL using Homebrew. So this particular link, uh, which will be in the description below, will tell you how to install uh, MySQL using Homebrew. And then you can start your services with just one command, uh, which is this one. So using brew services start MySQL, you'll be able to start your MySQL server uh, immediately and then you can use it to create your databases okay so now that you have of uh, uh, you are ready with a mysql server let's go and start working on it and creating our database so uh, again if you would like to set up your database using intellij you can use it via this or we can use something called as mysql workbench so mysql workbench is basically a gui application for your uh, MySQL server and we'll just create the database here and then we'll move on to using the IntelliJ uh, database uh, settings. So let me just create database here. So as you can see, I have uh, created my database and if I refresh the schema, you can see quads demo right here. Now that we have our database ready, let's actually go and uh, have it inside our IntelliJ application. So we can close this off for now and go to databases. Let me just delete this so that we can create it again. So remove. Okay. And let's go to plus data source MySQL and giving giving it a name as quartz demo. Now what we need to do is uh, add our URL link. So the URL link is going to be as follows. Uh, you can almost use the same URL link. So let me just uh, copy it and then show it to you. So MySQL server is running on localhost 3306. So as you can see um, here, so let me get this back. Demo and just paste the URL as it is. And it has a slash quads demo because a quads demo is what I'm using. SSL equal to false, allow public retrieval key true. So this is something which we'll talk about later, but it's important to have it here for our database to work. My username is root and my password is also root. So let's test the connection real quick. So that we make sure that our database is connected to IntelliJ. And yep, succeeded. So as you can clearly see, we have our database ready. Click apply and you do an okay so as you can see we have our database ready here so a sql server here quartz requires us to uh, create some of the tables using their sql script which they have so the next step here is going to be using those scripts and running them here inside our mysql console so go ahead to this url which is again in the description below and this is something which is given by quartz itself so all you have to do is copy the entire uh, SQL list and then just exactly paste it inside your uh, console. 
so i'm going to do that right now i can just do it a raw do a command a command c or control a control c and just paste it here so let me do it here yeah and these are all everything which quads requires you to you know have so don't worry about this you can go into this later or you can you know see this later so just make sure that you have this ready and yeah so if you want this in your quads file again you can add this uh, to your quads file so let's do that as well and great so now we have this ready we have our console ready also let's just do it without this so that we just make sure that we are not missing out on anything uh, yeah now all you have to do is run this so we'll just click on run and here you'll see uh, how it's being run so we can wait for some time you can also view your database uh, creation of tables in uh, the database so we'll see, do that in a minute uh, let me just show it to you here for now so that uh, green tick shows, shows that all of these uh, queries have run so let's wait for it to run all the others so as you can see all of them have been running so we have finished creating a database and to check whether the tables have been created or not go to database go to quads demo and as you can see we have all of our tables here ready so if you would like to see what's inside the tables let's look into that so first we have our job details so yeah before we uh, get into all of this let's actually understand the term terminologies which we need to know in quads so here we have an overview of quad scheduler api and terminologies again this uh, link will be in the description below so first we have the scheduler which is the primary api for scheduling adding removing jobs we can pause the jobs uh, resume the jobs all of that so it's a primary api or go to api when it comes to uh, dealing with quads next is a job so a single unit of work which uh, your application is going to do so in our case going to be scheduling the email that is called as a job and it's an interface to be implemented by the classes that represent a job so you will be uh, implementing the job class and then you it has a single method called execute which you will be implementing uh, where you write the work that needs to be performed by the job next comes in the job detail which represents an instance of a job also contains additional data in, in the form of a map so you have a key value pair and then you can add some primitive data types as uh, in that map so we'll be having our from uh, to subject body of the email inside this particular job data map every job detail is defined with the job key which is again consists of a name and a group so this makes every job unique a name and a group now next comes a trigger so a trigger is basically when do you want your job to be well triggered so it defines the schedule at which the job will be executed and a job can have many triggers but a trigger can only be associated to one job and similar to job detail every trigger is identified by a trigger key that comprises of a name and a group which again has to be unique within a group next we have a job builder and trigger builder which is basically uh, a way of creating job detail instances or creating trigger instances so this is all you need to know about the uh, terminologies in terms of quads and all of them are fairly straightforward uh, once you work with them for a few minutes or so then you'll be uh, very comfortable with them and now we can go ahead and see what's inside our tables so the job details tables has the scheduler name which uh, your local scheduler will be using the job name job group description job class name so in our case it's going to be email job whether it's durable or not whether you can update the data or not and the job data which it has inside it the next important table is the quad trigger table the name of the trigger name of the job it's associated with and priority next fire time previous fire time when it's going to get fired and the trigger state uh, which tells you uh, the state in which the trigger is so it's acquired waiting running all of that so the other tables are also important but you will mostly be dealing with these two particular tables and this is how you actually integrate your 
got tables inside a database, connect your database to a Spring Boot application. And in the next video, we'll be talking about uh, implementing our payload or the request and the response that you would want your application to give uh, for your email scheduling app. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.